That's why Ezekiel 38 and 39 are going to occur. It's early in the tribulation period. They got the seven-year peace treaty and they can build their temple. And that's going to just infuriate all the Muslims. And God intercedes, protects them, and from that day forward, it says in 39 verses, uh, what, 7, 22, 20, 29? From that day forward, they will know who the Messiah is and they will, uh, and they, and they will follow Jesus. Their conversions will start. Okay. okay? And nobody else will stand up for them. We want, America won't have the power to do it anymore. We're, we're wasting all our money on, on you know, trying, to, trying, to stop the, trying to stop the Muslims from fighting each other. Let them fight each other and yeah, kill each other off. Right. You're right. Sure. I why agree. waste the money? Why that's waste your? Why waste our, our people? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So anyway, I think we're in, you know chapter three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah Romans starting. chapter three. Remember the uh, the beginning of it. Uh, you know, I read the you know I, want, I reread the uh, the paragraph, the first paragraph, the paragraph defining the chapter. Uh, at the beginning of chapter three, Paul anticipates arguments in rebuttal uh, to his conclusions that uh, neither. Uh, uh, Israel's law, her circumcision, uh, nor her uh, birth could uh, save her. Uh, these theological objections are stated in the uh, even-numbered verses, and Paul answers each uh, objection as stated in the uh, odd-numbered verses. Uh, what in verse verse so verse one? What advantage then uh, has the Jew, or what uh, profit is is uh, of circumcision? Uh, Spiritually, there is no profit one way or the other. Okay, uh, right. You spell it both ways. P R O F F I T is a little bit confusing here. <laughs> okay, um, but it, you know, you, uh, the uh, the deal is the deal is uh, it, it was it was an outward expression of the law and what they're supposed to do. The law still applies today of the grace. The difference is that we, we you know, there uh, we don't have to. Do uh, sacrifice animals. We don't have to uh, uh, give ephods of this, that, and the other thing, um, or anything like that, because Jesus paid the sin debt. He just expects us to uh, to repent for for our, for our sins, and then He'll forgive them. Uh, commentary on uh, verse one: What advantage then has has a Jew? If the Jews are uh, condemned along with the uh, heathen, uh, what advantage is there uh, being to uh, choosing a nation to be the chosen nation of God, or what profit? Is there of uh, circumcision? Since circumcision is a sign of uh, Israel's uh, uh, covenant relationship with God, what advantage is, is that the relationship? Is that relationship if uh, being Jew uh, will not uh, save? Uh, circumcision is good for medical reasons, uh, so that's part of why God had to do it. But it was also a covenant with a blood covenant with Him. You know that's why most likely Jesus was uh, born on feasts or tabernacles. He's our tabernacle. First day he was born is the holy day that you don't you don't do any work. Eighth day, uh, you know, ends it, um, and you uh, and um, you know um, that would, and you do no work on that day, and that would have been the day he was circumcised. So I think in eternity we're going to find out he was really born then. He wasn't born on what we what's called Christmas, okay, December 25th. Uh, you know, every every you know every legitimate person knows that. There, you know, some Catholics actually actually believe. You know, I got one you know second John out at. Uh, of the clinic who who tried who tried to prove to me that Jesus was born on December twenty fifth. Yeah. And he's you know and his faith is totally and completely in Catholicism and Mary and everything that, that goes on with that. And I said, wait a minute, the Jews have a calendar that is three hundred and fifty four days long. Okay. How how can you wind up on, on a Roman calendar at three sixty five every single year on December twenty fifth? <laughs> uh. <laughs> of course I only got out about three or four words and he interrupted me because that's what he always does. See, I'm supposed to listen to him, uh, and unfortunately, he's not even saved. I pray for him right away. Pray for a whole bunch of Catholics that come out to the uh, to the out to the clinic. So, really, really, you know, well, virtually all of them are really nice people. This guy, uh, you know, I, I've stopped talking to him. He blasphemes God. He says the Catholic Church gave us the Bible and not God. Okay. Yeah. Well. That's what they're indoctrinated with. All the cults learn from Catholicism how to indoctrinate people. Um, before Limbaugh was on the radio, uh, uh, you know, I used to listen to a station back in Detroit, being, you know, being from, from Michigan, um, that had a, a talk show, you know, during lunch while we back when I had a real job. Um, as people, some people say, of course, this is this is the real job. Um, and uh, uh, the guy, the guy running the program, J.P. McCarthy, uh, very devout Catholic. Uh, might, might have been might have been a born again Catholic. I, I don't know, 
Um, but uh, you know, once he had a, you know, he had different people in the program, and, and, and the really interesting programs. Um, and one time he had a priest on, and what caught my ear was the pre during the program, the priest says, "Give me a child for the first five or six months of his life, and I will make him I, first five or six years, and I will make him a Catholic for life, not a Christian, a Catholic." Communist philosophy. Okay? That's the indoctrination. Now. You know, you know, we, we follow Isaiah 118, come let us reason together, all right? Uh, that's why a lot of you guys have questions and I, I don't do sermons down here. Okay, I want you guys to ask some questions, whether whether Martha believes me or not. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, verse, verse 2. Uh, much every way, chiefly, because that unto uh, them uh, were committed the uh, oracles of God. So he's answering the question. Uh, much... Uh, much every way, quote unquote. Paul uh, contends that uh, there are uh, many uh, uh, privileges with God, uh, which God has uh, granted to Israel. Uh, you remember they were the uh, they were the chosen people in the Old Testament. They were the ones who were supposed to evangelize the world. But they were. You know, how many times did the uh, did you know it says say in the Old Testament that they were stiff-necked people? They kind of did what they wanted to do. God's on my side. Go on, I'll do whatever I want to do. Isn't that still happening today? You know, uh, Ecclesiastes 1.9, there's nothing new under the sun, right? The church is, most of the church is still doing that today. You know, uh, uh, God, I gave you my one or two hours Sunday morning, what more do you want? Well, he wants, he wants all of it, all right? And you're either, you're, you know, if, if, if you think that you can go to church and get saved, you're not saved at all. Uh, um, Going on with the commentary, uh, a list of them. A list of them is uh, given in uh, chapter 11. It is uh, in chapter 11 is uh, you know the faith chapter. You know, talking about different people. Uh, you know, uh, you know that uh, that faith gave them their righteousness. Um, you know, their you know their standing with God. Uh, it had nothing to do with their works. And, you know, work. Following the law is works. You know, Ephesians 2.89, you're saved by grace and faith and not by works. The study man should boast. All right? And that's where, you know, uh, the, you know that's the Catholic, Catholic answer. We will not touch those verses. I got the cheat sheet. They they will not touch them, touch that, because they believe you have to do, you know, salvation is a combination of, of Jesus going to the cross and you doing good works to uh, to justify it. All right? So uh, the Catholic answers, you know, I got the cheat sheet. They, 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 they don't even reference it. They don't want people. They don't want people seeing it. Uh, the problem is, people on our side of the church need to see verse ten. You're saved unto good works. You know, I you know, and then, and then it changes. It's you know, two, either eighteen or twenty-four. I forgot which. You know, as I said, in the Revelation class. I'm forgetting a few where a few verses are. It says, well, a lot of verses. Where a lot of verses are. Uh, it's, it says, you know, it says, I show you my my salvation by my works. If you're saved, God will have you doing things, witnessing to people at least. You know, like me, you know, going, going, uh, doing a whole bunch of pro-life work, you know, with five, five, six, five or six groups around the country, universities or whatever, um, downtowns, etc. Uh, it is not necessary for Paul to uh, emulate uh, them here. Uh, you know, he saves it. You know, he's not talking. He's not going to talk about them here until we go chapter 11 and talk about them. And, and, then, and then have them all at once, because it winds up being a conclusion to, uh, to what the uh, you know, what he's doing. He wants to set it all up. So Paul was very good at setting up uh, the Holy Spirit, you know, listening to the Holy Spirit, and setting things up, and then giving the conclusions to it. You are now. That is, that is, that is, that he proves his point with everything he says in the and then he gets the principle which comes all. He simply points out uh, one as, uh, as an example after the other. Unto them, quote, unto them which uh, commit the oracles of God, unquote. One of the chief uh, uh, privileges of Israel is that uh, they were the uh, custodians of the oracles of God. Acts 7.38 and Hebrews uh, 5.12 mentioned these oracles, uh, the old, which means the Old Testament scriptures. It was a uh, great advantage to the Jews to be uh, uh, singled out by God and entrusted with the uh, reception inspiration and uh, transmission of the Old Testament scriptures. This is another one of those things that uh, people who uh, want to add uh, books to the Old Testament who claim to be the church, whether it be a Catholic church, uh, Eastern Orthodox, uh, I don't know if the Episcopal Church does it or not, 
okay, you know, those that are following, you know, it came part way out of Catholicism, but not all the way out. Um, they want to add the seven extra books to justify what they what they believe as opposed to the Protestant Reformation and the questions people had. You know, people were people were reading the Bible and the Catholic Church was saying one thing and the Bible was saying something else and they're and they're asking the, the priests and whatever else, how did how how do you justify this? That's part of that's why they add the seven extra books. That's why they call it Deuterocanonical, a second canon, white and cheese first. <laughs> okay, in in our Bible reading I was reading back here where it, uh, we were reading about um, David and it said oh, I'm sorry I thought I had it. We're in the Old Testament are you? In um, Chronicles. Okay. Yes. And it said now the acts of David the king first and last behold they are written in the book of Samuel the seer and in the book of Nathan and in the prophet Gad. So all of these Prophets had books written. The, the there were a, there were about three thousand book three thousand writings from prophets. Yeah, you know, from, from that were considered to be in the Bible. Okay, um, only some were inspired, and God said God says He okay. preserves He preserves His word. So, so the thirty nine books of the Old Testament that were can actually canonized by the Jews, uh, you know, are, are, are what we accept. The 27 in the New Testament were canonized by the Church, the Imperial Catholic Church in 393 at the Council of Hippo. Uh, you know, the Roman Catholic Church didn't start until like the Roman Empire fell in 476, and then immediately went into the Dark Ages. All right. Right. So, so the, the, the Roman Catholic Church did not have the right to canonize books in the Old Testament. Right. They did that officially at the Council of Trent in 1545 and 1546. Okay. Of course, Catholics say, well, we took them out. I said, we weren't having the council with them. You were. Yeah. Okay, go back and look it up. Yeah, go ahead. Well, questions. then, is it, is it profitable for a person who's really seeking to know about that? If well, it's just, it's it's more, the books and it's, it? there were more, different people did historical books, but it doesn't necessarily mean they were, they were uh, inspired by God to be in the Bible. Yeah. Samuel was. You know, you got first and second. Yeah. You know, first and things about first and second Samuel, which are which are in there. Yeah. Okay, which were which were you know which were inspired because you know the chronicles were were inspired, but the others were were basically history, and what was going on. And God didn't necessarily need the history to be in there. If they didn't claim <laughs> inspiration from God, if they had things that violated the other sixty six books, that's why they're not in there. Okay, you done. For now, where would you find these books if you wanted? To uh you probably find them online. Oh, online. Yeah, but you're not. You don't have a. No. You know, search it. Libraries don't carry yeah. them. Then, or uh, I. Like that. You think they're going to carry? I don't know. You're going to carry anything that do they consider Christian these days? No, no not nowadays. <laughs> okay. They're busy carrying you know, you might, you know family bookstore <laughs> might might have yeah. something on them, but recognize that there could be errors in them. Uh, a lot of people are after the Book of Enoch right now. Thinking, oh, why isn't it in the Bible? You know, he's, you know, he's the second witness is coming back. You know, you know, in Revelation 11, uh, you know, and you know, and, you know, he's obviously a man of God. Why isn't it there? Well, at the end of the book, he has a couple errors uh, in it. Okay, a couple things that violate the other verses. There's some good history there. You find out some very good things that are not necessarily in the Bible. Okay, but they weren't inspired. You know, to to be in the Bible. All right. So you can glean things off, but also recognize that if you're not a strong Christian and know what this book says, okay, on a high level, you'll skip right you'll skip right over some things that are not that are not uh, not part of that violate other verses and not realize it because you don't have enough education. Not to say that you won't get a bunch out of it, okay, but you still have to compare things back to this. Okay, go ahead. All right. Uh, I've always, I never got an answer on this when I attended Catholic school. And that was well. That's why you didn't get any answers. Yeah. You got dogma and tradition. Yeah. <laughs> but you mentioned Roman Catholicism as compared to regular Catholicism. No, no. Uh, imperial. You mean the Imperial Catholic Church? Yes. Mentioned? Okay. Yeah. Here's the history. I've gone over this many times. Mm -hmm. The church originally was called the White back in uh, Acts nine two. All right. Because of John, what is now John fourteen six, they didn't have the number. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, so they called the way. Later on in Acts, they were called Christian. They weren't called Catholic. They weren't called Baptist. They weren't called anything. Okay? They, you know, uh, and, and the word Christian was a word of derision 
that they that the people adopted and say, yeah, we, 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 you know, we, we want that name. Okay, that they accepted it. You did not have a church name other than that, other than those, until Constantine decided, you know, saw the you know, supposedly the cross of the sun and whatever, and you know that whole story of, uh, in 312, and he so and he allowed he stopped the persecution of Christianity. It became a, um, a you, you know, it was it was no longer persecuted. He you know he waited until his deathbed to do baptism because you know they were already going apostate. All right. Uh, that they thought baptism saved people. We know that baptism is as an adult, as a profession of faith. That's how it is in the New Testament. Everybody, everybody in the New Testament, even Cornelius in his house, the people, everybody got baptized. But it said everybody understood what they, was going on. Therefore, they had reached an age of accountability. They were adults. Now, Constantine would have been an older man too. So even if he had children in his house, it says whole house, which is probably only servants. The children were probably growing up and gone. But even with some kids there, they would have already been growing up too because he was an older guy. All right? You know, he was he was in charge, you know, he was he had he had a very lofty position in the Roman Empire, in the Roman uh, army. Uh, so he uh, uh, you know it would have taken many, many years for him to get there. Uh, so that started the Imperial Catholic Church underneath Constantine and, and those who succeeded him. But in 476 the Roman Empire fell. And when they fell, the, the uh, 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 Imperial Catholic Church went away also. And then the non-governmental people took over. That's when they decided they had to post it went all the way back. Okay, you know, after that. Uh, uh, you know, at one point in time you had you had three popes within a, within a, you know, at the same time. I think it was uh, uh, what was it, 795 to 805. Um, and one one of the popes was running his uh, his stuff out of a whorehouse. Yeah. Okay, another 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 pope. Uh, they found out when when she died <laughs> that she was not a man. All right. Don't forget the orgy of the chestnuts. Oh, I remember. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, they had that. Okay, so so the 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 Roman Catholic Church actually started after the Imperial Catholic Church when the Roman Empire fell away. All right, and the world, you know, depending on who you listen to, sometimes you know as early as five hundred. The, the world went into what's called the Dark Ages, the spiritual Dark Ages. Some say as late as 606. But it didn't come out until, I say, the Gutenberg printing press, not Martin Luther. He was just a product of it. People were reading the Bible and saying, this stuff doesn't fit. He was listening to them and hearing them, and he realized it doesn't fit. And then he understood Romans 8, one, you're, you know, you're saved, you know, that you're saved by grace, uh, you're not saved, saved by works. Okay, he finally, he finally got it through his, through his head, and that's when he broke away. But he only broke away part way. He didn't come all the way out. Okay, Episcopals didn't come all the way out because, you know, uh, King Henry, you know, all he cared about was getting a divorce so he could marry another woman. All right. Uh, you know, uh, others, uh, you know, and that's, and that's when people start reading the Bible again. The Bible was banned. Okay, uh, I forgot what council was going on in uh, uh, 1229, but they, they, they supposedly put the, book, the Bible in the book on the list of forbidden books. People weren't allowed to read it because they might uh, they might find out and look what happened a couple hundred years later when the Gutenberg printing press printed Bibles at the uh, uh, at a price people could afford and start reading the word for themselves. That's when all the trouble started. The Apostle Reformation. Go ahead, next question. Okay, so would it be safe to say that the Dark Ages and you know this I keep hearing these you know, the history of the Catholic Church and how they sort of hoarded information. Yeah, they did. They, they still did. They, they prevented people from knowing things, yeah. and they actually persecuted people. Oh, read Fox's out. Book of Martyrs. Yeah. Okay? If you if you didn't believe the Eucharist was the body and blood of Christ and baptism saved you, they they killed you. Mm. You don't burn people at stake. But even, even scientific like people... That were coming out with. Oh yeah, yes, yeah. The world around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, forget forget the fact that, that Isaiah uh, 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 forty twenty two says God sits above the circle of the earth. Okay. You know. So so in reality, the Catholic Church was responsible for the Dark Ages in many respects. It was a spiritual Dark Ages, and that's exactly why. Yeah. And you when we did the we did the end time prophecy class, the last you know the four churches in Revelation chapter two are one after the other. Thyatira is the last one. And it says, it says, uh, you know, that uh, I'm going to give you time, you know, to, to repent. The or, 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 or Sardis, one, one of the two. It says, you know, that they, you know, uh, and and he gave them time. He gave them a thousand years. He gave them one of his days. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, Second Peter three eight and nine. Today, they get, I, you know, a thousand years is but yesterday. Um, what is it? Uh, Psalms ninety uh, verse four. A day to God is a thousand years. He gave him a whole day to repent, and then God. And then you have the first church in Revelation chapter three. Sardis it says, "You are the dead church. I gave you time to repent. You didn't do it." Okay. Um, so both Thyatira is the beginning of the Roman Catholic Church going into the Dark Ages. At the end, is Sardis. They still exist today. The three churches of Revelation 3 exist today. Then you have the born-again church. Hopefully that's all of us. Okay, they we're all in the Church of Philadelphia. The blood bought church. We're the ones that are going to go in the rapture. Mind you, it transcends all man's denominations. But the more the more heavy, the heavier people are in trying to understand the Bible without being legalistic and judgmental, as so, yes, you know, us fundamentals can have a problem with. Uh, you know, we, do, we, 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 we want to make sure we don't do that. Uh, you know, evangelicals, they can, they can pick and choose, and unfortunately the Pentecostals, they're, they're all concerned about their, their carpet time, you know, the you know, gifts of the Holy Spirit and whatever else, more so than the Bible. There's still going to be people, you know, even, you know, even some Catholics, you know, some Catholics that they're saying, praise God for that. Uh, but uh, some of the churches have gone beyond the Church of Philadelphia. They, you know, after 200 years, man left his own devices, won't pollute anything. Look at America today compared to where we were, okay? We're 200 and almost 40 years old, okay, well, what, 239? Yeah, okay, uh, yeah, next year will be, no, 238, Acts 238, <laughs> yeah. Acts 238. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we have ISIS in Yes, right, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. we, uh, uh, you know, we've, we, and, and look where America has gone, the same thing happens with man's denominations, they start to fall away, all right, they start, they start coming out and being more liberal, more liberal, more liberal, you know, Presbyterian USA, uh, you know, abortion and sodomy are okay. Uh, the Episcopals, abortion and sodomy, okay. Anything the Bible, anything the Bible says that they're against, uh, just make sure you come to church and drop off your money. All right. Uh, you know, uh, you know, there's, you know, the Methodists have gone that way. You know, the United Methodists, where we're, you know, the church I grew in, church denomination that I grew up in. Uh, you know, you you have uh, a bunch of your, your um, uh, Lutherans, uh, and now um, the you know the Missouri Senate was the mm -hmm. best of the bunch, and they're starting to fall. So man left his own devices without anybody interfering, uh, without the persecution. See, the church stayed straight until you know until the persecution went away. You know, at 312, the persecution went away, and by you know 500, they're 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 going into the uh, into the dark ages. Okay, because there was no more persecution. You know, uh, persecution of the church is the seeds of the you know persecution is the seeds of the church, right? Okay, so uh, are we are we done with questions? I guess so. Yeah. Okay, what? For temp te temporarily. Okay. Uh, for what if uh, some verse three? For what if uh, some did not believe? Shall their unbelief uh, make the faith of uh, God without effect? You know, if somebody does, doesn't believe, does that mean God doesn't exist? You know, uh, look how many times we see that, you know, those of us who they go to go to abortion clinics or uh, out to the universities or uh, do downtowns uh, where, you know, we're putting up uh, large displays of uh, uh, snow or not, we've got it. Showing abortion <laughs> and my babies and, uh, the comparison, you know, they basically say, well, I don't believe that, you know. You know, how many, how many people that go to the universities <coughs> these days? I run into them all the time. You know, a, um, a friend of mine died recently, and, uh, you know, I, I, I hope he was saved. Um... Uh, Every time we, you know, we had discussions about the Bible, um, you know, uh, he, you know, I would, I would give him verse after verse after verse, and he said, "Well, I don't believe that." I said, "You know, you're not calling, you're, you're not saying you disagree with me. You're saying you disagree with God, and I don't think that's a very good thing to do." You know, <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay, um, you know, and uh, I hope he had the basics, um, uh, because you know, uh, he 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 preferred the Douay version over the King James. Okay, um, you know that's a Catholic Bible. He said he wasn't Catholic. Um, you know, you know, you, you know, out of every Bible, you can still get salvation. Don't, you know, don't, you know, even, you know, we got seventy some odd. The true number is seventy some odd. English Bibles, it's not hundred thousand, whatever pastor's saying. Uh, you know, seventy four, seventy five, somewhere in that range. Um, English uh, translations to the Bible right now. You can get truth out of all of them. The question is, are there heresies in this with it? Um, and, uh, and how deep are they going uh, into it? The, you know, be, because they're, most of the Bibles are using the wrong text. They're using, they're using uh, texts that were created later 
but they're older than what we have today because people use the older ones. They had to reprint them, so they're reprinting after those old ones that they didn't use. So, uh, you know, uh, Septuagint for the Old Testament is nowhere near as good as the Masoretic text. New Testament is the Textus Receptus, uh, not the Alexandrian text. The Alexandrians um, were Gnostics. They wanted knowledge. That's what the word Gnostic means. But if they didn't agree with something, they either changed it or they removed it. That's why you can have things, you know, like many of the Bibles, uh, Philippians 2, 6, coming from the um, Alexandrian text say, Jesus could not comprehend that he was God. Well, how many other verses does that violate? See, that's where the problem is. And if you don't know how to compare the verses back and forth, then you can have a problem if you're reading some of these other books. The same thing can happen with some of the Bibles. Okay? Uh, commentary in verse 3. Now, a second argument is anticipated. Remember, the arguments are in... Uh, are in verse are in the odd verses. The uh, uh, the answers are in the even verses, uh, or was it the other way around? Uh, yeah, here's here's a question in three. Uh, now a second argument is anticipated. Quote: Shall there be unbelief? Uh, shall there unbelief uh, make the faith of God without effect? Uh, just because somebody doesn't believe in God doesn't mean he doesn't exist. Okay, he may not exist to them because they've rejected. You know, as I said, the Bible says only a third of the people who ever lived are going to be saved. God is going to be replacing every one of those fallen angels with one of us. Satan wants his compliments, so he gets the other two thirds. And then, you know, the Bible, the Bible uh, um, implies a third of the Jews are going to be saved, a third of the Gentiles, us Gentiles are going to be saved. Uh, so, praise God, uh, we're, we're, we're part of that group. Uh, a lot of people uh, think, uh, you know, they have their own designer God that allows him to, allows them. Allows their God, their God allows them to do whatever they want to do. Uh, you know, how many times have I mentioned you've seen thing. people walk into abortion clinics with Bibles? One, you know, one woman walked in with a study Bible. Where did I give her verses to study? Of course, she rejected all of them. You know, uh, Old She's Testament, New Testament, it's, it's all it's all over the Bible. All right. Uh, you know, people driving in with with crosses hanging from, from the rear view mirror. Where do I get righteous indignation when when that occurs? Okay, uh, that. You know, just because you don't think there's a God doesn't mean God doesn't exist. You know, uh, back to the beginning of this book, you know, uh, uh, chapter 1, 18 to 20. Uh, you can't look at creation and say there is no God. You will be without excuse when you stand before God. That, uh, it's going to be too late yeah, for you know, uh -huh. The problem is, because America has been Christian forever, and we've, and, uh, and, uh, we've watered down the gospel... People think they can go do whatever they want to do. All they have to do is say, God, you know, forgive me and go on with your life. Well, if, it's, if the repentance isn't up here, or here in your heart, you know, whichever you know, symbolic means you want, you want to put on it, then you aren't really forgiven because you didn't really repent. You know, um, so I told one woman, you know, she says, I'm going to, re you know, no problem. I'm going to repent when, when, when I get done having the abortion. And she was serious. Wow. You know, so uh, I said, well, if you go through the abortion and you do the repenting afterwards, God is going to call you out here and stand with me for the rest of your life. Her eyes got as big as silver dollars. She says, oh, no, he's not. In other words, she's not really repenting. See, she wasn't really repenting anyway because she thinks she, thinks she can get away with murder. Okay? Now, did King David really, hang on, did King David really get, get away with murder? No. When he no. murdered Uriah? No. God said he would never have, have peace in his house again. He didn't. Okay. You know, uh, Absalom took over his uh, took over the kingdom for a while, right? Uh, he did not have peace. He had trouble forever uh, uh, for, for for what he did. Uh, so you know, there there, and and stop to realize if there are not consequences in this life, there certainly will be consequences in eternity. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. Now I keep hearing that in this in the arguments that I get or discussions. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh, discussions that I have with people that are. Uh, sort of like on the edge, or even sometimes even just totally atheists. They always right. They always say, "Well, you know, why would God create all these people?" And then, you know, for example, the Buddhists. Yeah. They're in a society that pushes Buddhism. Yes. Right. Our uh, we know that they have to believe in Jesus Christ in order for them to be saved. Not ne no, not necessarily. Okay. Um, go back to Romans one eighteen. You, if they don't hear about Jesus Christ, they're not, re in, in, you know, and hearing is, you know, really hearing, not just somebody talking, right. okay? 
uh, remember, you know, and, and the basis of that is uh, uh, Matthew 16, uh, 10, Matthew 13, 10 to 16. Why, the disciples came to Jesus and said, uh, why do you teach the people parables? So he says, for you to know, not for them, lest they be converted, because it's not their time yet. There's different times, so different people. There's a different standard for those who don't not, do don't hear about Jesus Christ. They have to you know. They can't. You can't look at nature and say there is no God creating it, right. even though they don't hear about Jesus and maybe understand it.